Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. Deciding if a patient with severe abdominal pain needs to go to the OR stat can feel like staring down class five whitewater rapids. It's not something you want to mess up. In this fast-paced sketch, we'll talk about the major findings of a patient with abdominal pain that would alert you to an abdominal surgical emergency. We'll also highlight life-threatening intra-abdominal conditions that cause those findings and that need emergent surgical intervention. Heads up though, this is not an exhaustive list. And we also won't be reviewing how to do the general abdominal exam here. With that in mind, let's start by reading these rapids. Begin by determining whether the patient is sick or not sick. And this starts at the doorway without even entering the room. Observe their appearance and mannerisms. It's a bit gestalty and requires practice to get good at. Is the patient resting comfortably in their bed, or are they pale and diaphoretic and in distress? Maybe they're grimacing and laying completely still, flinching when their bed is bumped, or are they playing on their phone? You get the idea. Vitals are key early on, too, especially if the patient is already hooked up to monitors. Tachycardia and hypotension, cool and clammy skin in some cases, and altered mental status are all going to alert you that your patient could be in or heading into shock. Septic shock and hemorrhagic shock are common here. Oy, as if the whitewater wasn't wild enough, that sky is looking pretty ominous too. But the most important findings for an abdominal surgical emergency come from the abdominal exam. Signs of peritonitis also declare a patient as sick. This is also called a surgical abdomen or an acute abdomen. But these terms are more vague. Peritonitis is diffuse inflammation or irritation of the parietal peritoneum from some irritating substance in the peritoneal cavity, like gastrointestinal contents from a perforation, or blood, or urine. So just remember this flame patterned kayak spray skirt around this girl's abdomen. I think she's done this a few times before. Keep in mind that the visceral peritoneum has visceral innervation opposed to the somatic innervation of the parietal layer, and thus, pain from inflammation of the visceral peritoneum is less severe and more vague. From here on, when we say peritoneum, we mean parietal peritoneum. 